It has been 10 years since Sword Art Online cannonballed into the pool that is anime itself, like that one kid at the resort pool. And just like that kid, the ripples and waves it left behind are as impressive as they are annoying. Impressively annoying. Annoyingly impressive. I mean, Isekai is barely a phase that anime is going through at this point, and more of an established, standardized genre within the community, with its sheer volume of series that have been added to its roster season by season over the past decade. And yet, in that time, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash remains the single most grounded, personal, and relatable of the entire lot. Now, I do understand that the standard for these things is rather low as it pertains to this genre, and I love Truck-kun as much as the next guy, but let's be honest here, even clowning on Isekai is starting to feel a little played out. Like I said, there's a lot to be found here. That is, of course, considering you're not above doing a little bit of dumpster diving. Okay, I'm, I'm done this time, I swear. Apart from the waves of shonen power fantasy, there are series here and there that dare to subvert the various tropes and try to tell a slightly different story from the rest. The show does not waste any time in letting us know the circumstances and the stakes at hand. Upon waking up in a random tower, a bunch of kids find themselves in a medieval age type of fantasy world. Apart from their modern clothes, their confusion as to where they are lets us know that none of them are originally from here. The guards nearby take them to town and they're brought to the Volunteer Soldier Brigade office where they get the rundown. They're in the land of Grimgar, specifically the borderlands of the Ortana Kingdom, and that becoming a trainee and then full-fledged volunteer soldier is the only job any of them are qualified to perform. They're given a trainee badge and a bag of money to get them started, except it costs double what they're given to become actual soldiers with all of its benefits. What's more, they also have zero guidance. The land is filled with monsters and other non-human races that are hostile to humanity, and the borderlands are basically areas the Artana Kingdom is trying to reach into to broaden its influence to sustain human society. Which, by the way, immediately contextualizes the dungeon crawling. No one is simply adventuring or looking for fun, and the people who are tend to change their tunes once reality slaps them in the face. They're working under life and death conditions to expand the reaches of human society in order to protect and preserve its interests while also trying to earn enough money to make the day's rent and, I don't know, maybe get a meal or two in. If they're lucky, nothing crazy. Conversely, from the kingdom's perspective, they need a consistent supply of soldiers to continue carving out their strongholds, and that's where our guys come in. Since soldiers are expendable in the borderlands and the mortality rate is understandably high, investing in these people who are basically just licensed mercenaries would just divert resources from the actual army on the front lines, meaning they'll have to fend for themselves. For everything. After they buy their gear, food, housing, and combat and support skills, they've barely got enough cash left over to sustain themselves for two weeks. And if that doesn't sound like the realest thing you have ever seen in an anime, I have no idea what to tell you. But I am getting ahead of myself here, considering I haven't even introduced our main cast as yet. They're actually the strongest aspect of the show, but we'll get into the meat and potatoes of why that is further on. One thing that does make them really interesting and stand out compared to those in other shows though is how they end up coming together. Early on, the most protagonist looking one in the crowd separates himself and selects all the people he thinks would be strongest or most capable to join his party, giving them the optimal chances for survival in this dog eat dog world. This leaves us with our actual cast as the leftovers with nobody else to turn to but literally each other. None of them have any notable combat skill or potential to speak of and on top of all that, they all have some sort of quirk or oddity about them or their personalities that affects how they interact with others and the world. As we meet them, Haruhiro, our actual protagonist, has zero self-confidence, isn't really all that reliable, and is about as charismatic as a sheet of paper. He ends up in the thief role because he thinks that's the only way he can be useful to the team, giving you an idea of how he sees himself. Shihoru, their mage, is similar to Haruhiro in that she's not super self-confident, but she's also quite shy and insecure as well. Yumei the ranger is not the sharpest arrow in the quiver and often rambles on and on about absolutely nothing. Mogozo is very reserved and despite his size deserving of his role as the team tank, lacks so much presence you sometimes forget he's there even when he's on screen. 
And on the other hand, there's Ranta, the DPS edgelord who feels the need to let everyone know at all times where he is and what he's thinking. Lastly, Manato, their leader and healer, is the most competent of the group, but for the sake of spoilers, even he has his faults that you realize end up holding the party back. And that's what this all boils down to. The party. In this world, survival only comes when you work as a team. Humans are nowhere near the top of the food chain, and no single person has all of the necessary skills for survival in Grimgar alone. They've all got to pull their collective resources together and cooperate if they have any chance of seeing home at the end of each day. Every single battle they face is a literal dance of life and death, and this gets hammered into them throughout the season until they can't go a single second without thinking about it. Coming out the gate, they spend the entire first arc of the season learning how to handle goblins, the weakest creatures in all of Grimgar, and yet one is enough to overwhelm all of them at once. Now, this brings up two issues people have had with the show, which is pacing, which is also coupled with how outrageously weak they all are, but let's be real here. These are teenagers from the modern age of cell phones and Amazon one-hour delivery. If you were thrown into a world like this with literally zero combat experience and zero survival experience, how well do you think you'd fare here? Ever felt the weight of plate armor or a sword? Ever shot a bow at a moving target with the pressure of life and death hanging in the balance? Yeah, me neither, I'd be dead so quick. Even Ranta, the only one actually excited to claim his first kill, crumbles to tears after being forced to very violently and brutally be the one to actually finish off the team's first goblin. Up until now, they'd all just been going with the flow and doing whatever they needed in order to get by, but for the very first time, their situation hits these guys like a truck. No pun intended. You can justify it as much as you want, but at the end of the day, these guys have to take sentient life in order to make rent. There are no HUD displays or level and experience tracking. For all intents and purposes, this is the real world. When they cut into their enemies, they bleed and feel bone as their weapons slice through flesh and tendons. When their enemies die, their bodies don't disappear and evaporate into light particles, their lifeless corpses have to be physically raided and taken apart for the spoils and treasures within. The trauma and overall impact of these subtle nuances are something this show spends time to explore. I'll be honest with you, if you're looking for an adrenaline-filled action ride from start to finish, you're probably not going to find it here. There's a decent amount of extremely well-directed and animated action sequences, but that's not the point of this story. This isn't a story about defeating the demon lord or fulfilling a special destiny. Like I said, everything comes down to the party. It's a slow burn about the journey from incompetence to competence about going from a team in name only to being a cohesive, efficient, and effective unit. True brothers and sisters in arms, all while examining what it really takes to get there. As I went back down memory lane to rewatch this show for the video, two words kept popping up constantly in my head. Group dynamics. Anyone who's played games like WoW or any MMORPG with raid mechanics really can probably attest to the importance of group dynamics when you're on a mission with your team. Having a plan and making sure everyone understands their roles is crucial to success at the most fundamental level. The same holds true for our squad, except they don't get to log off. They rely on each other for more than just combat, they need to also cook, clean, and have all sorts of responsibilities and priorities to take care of even after the workday is over. And the things that happen between them during their downtime heavily influence their ability to perform on the field. One really noteworthy example of this is the bathhouse scene. And I, I know what you're thinking. This is just a tiny, moderate amount of fan service, but just follow me on this one, okay? I know a lot of shows aren't stranger to a bathhouse scene or two where the guys try to sneak a peek at the ladies in their group, but this show does not shy away at all from how disgusting something like that actually is, as well as its potential to absolutely nuke relationships. Illustrated by the awkward silences they share and the ladies' inability to trust the rest of their team. Being outnumbered by the guys, they completely shut them out, even though most of them apologize and had nothing to do with it in the first place. They crossed a line that simply can't be uncrossed, and the effects felt from this scene literally haunts the group from the background until the next substantial plot point in the story. 
and I think that deserves some acknowledgement. And that's not the only lesson they learned the hard way either. Much like the group of kids who lets the A student do most of the work on the group project, these guys don't take much initiative or understand that everyone is equally responsible for their collective success. Instead, they'd rather topload responsibility to others who they find more competent, leaving them both imbalanced and vulnerable. I really love that none of this is sugarcoated either. Their personalities clash, sometimes in the middle of the battlefield, so they actually need to make an intentional effort to understand and connect with each other regularly in order to build and sustain their relationships. And they also learn that they have to go out of their own way in order to do so. They have to learn to both compromise and adapt to each other, to be able to reach out and know when to pull back, as well as how to communicate directly when there's an issue, and how to not be too passive or abrasive. When the person beside you is responsible for your life, you both need to know that you can rely on each other. And where some shows just give that kind of chemistry out like candy to their casts, these guys have to actively work both to earn and keep it over time. Apart from all the themes and deeper aspects of the show though, it just looks beautiful. Like, look at this! I'm a sucker for watercolors, and the environments of Grimgar look absolutely fantastical. Sometimes throughout the show we get these cool visual montages of our cast and regular citizens just living life and it's honestly really soothing and relaxing. The splotchy colors and rough line work really makes the world actually seem like a fantasy land that our characters don't belong in. Almost like they've jumped into a storybook as opposed to an RPG. That being said, they're often just hanging out in these segments like I said earlier and the vibes. As out of place as they seem, they also look right at home just relaxing, enjoying a hobby, or passing through vendor stalls. We can even learn additional things about their character and personalities just by observing how they spend their free time. Like how Moguzo loves doing detailed work with his hands like whittling or cleaning and maintaining his equipment. All in all, I really enjoy this show, and not despite the pacing and characters, but because of them. And I feel like a show like this is exactly what a lot of people are looking for in modern isekai, so check it out. Strong recommend. And feel free to let me know down in the comments what your favorite isekai is and why. Peace.